Being human, do you ever wonder what makes us who we are? Our habits, preferences, or where we came from? We are expressing ourselves in thousands of ways every day through our choices. Let's have a conversation with people who are having interesting lives. My name is Alan Walker. I'm a doctor of chiropractic and a human being. So I'd, I'd like to welcome a, a great friend of mine, um, someone who's been building a business we're going to find out exactly how many years now, but uh, in, over in Lincolnshire, a few people will probably guess who, who we're speaking to today. Um, someone who's building a, a business not just for uh, helping clients uh, get out of problems with the nervous system, but also someone who is uh, building a great business training chiropractors throughout the country. And I'm sure possibly in Europe, but we'll find out about that in a little while. But look, I'd like to just don't waste any more time, but welcome uh, Dr. Tom Waller onto the podcast. Um, welcome onto the podcast, Tom. Alan, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be with you. I'm admiring your studio, which is making mine look pathetic right now. Um, but it's it's such a pleasure to be with you and, and share with you today. Thank you. No, brilliant. If it's all right with you, Tom, um, there's a. I mean, I've got loads of questions for you. But one of the one of the, the first ones, if you don't mind, I just I, I don't know anything about you you personally. I mean, for, for me, I was a, I was just a poor boy brought up in Birkenhead and. Um, and one day I decided I'd, I'd, I've been receiving chiropractic treatment for, uh, well, since I was 20 years old. And it suddenly came a time in my life, I just went, do you know what? I'm ready for a change and I wanted to become a chiropractor. Wasn't sure whether I'd be able to ever uh, bridge that gap between my education and, and uh, be, becoming a part of this great profession. But for, uh, for yourself, Tom, you know, where was your early beginnings? Where, where were you brought up? Great question. So my mum's family from Birkenhead. How interesting is that? Um, it doesn't surprise me it doesn't surprise me <laughs> but then they moved to bristol so my hometown is bristol uh that's where i grew up born and bred um i live in lincoln now obviously i i, I moved here years ago for my first job uh and met my wife here um and we we've stayed here because we saw a county that was lacking what we thought it needed uh in terms of a healthcare revolution and that's what we we bought to the county um you know, and I, I've fallen in love with the place. You know, it's not quite as hilly as where I'm from, but it's a, it's a great place to be. And my journey started really, as I was going through school, I had my career set and my, my eye set on a, a career in the military. Um, I, I chased that, I pursued that. And at the same time, uh, my mum actually said, why don't you think about becoming a chiropractor who I'd seen when I was young uh, for headaches, uh, who'd also helped me uh, get over my asthma. Uh, and I thought, well, why not? I'll give that a go. And I ended up taking the path of chiropractic. I've never looked back since. Um, it's been a journey. I certainly didn't start it as I've now come to live and breathe it. Um, but, I, you know, I, I kind of, I fell into the profession, I suppose. Uh, a little different to how some people, you know, get these light bulb moments. I kind of fell into it. And then I got my light bulb moment when I was in it, which has brought me to where I am today. Brilliant. Have you got any siblings? I do. I have a sister who's an A&E nurse. So like the opposite end of the spectrum to what I do. Uh, and I have a brother who gallivants around in the world. So, um, yeah, I'm the middle child. So that's why I'm, I suppose I'm a little bit rebellious and uh, don't like to take authority too yeah. well. Well, I think it's the rebellious spirit that makes a good chiropractor. Because, I mean, right as we know, the, the history of chiropractic has been uh, rebels since it started. And, uh, and rightfully so as well. There's a few things need to change in the world and uh, we're, we're battling on with that um, I would every, every, agree. every day of the week, every day of the week. So with, what would be your earliest memory? The, the, the happiest, the... earliest memory, happiest? Wow, uh, what a question. I did not see that one coming. What a question. Um, I was thinking this, actually, I was thinking this when I was playing with my daughter the other day, um, and she's just learning to stand up. So she's holding my fingers and pulling herself upright. It's fantastic to watch. Um, and I remember sitting on my dad's lap and holding his thumbs. And I thought his thumbs were huge. My little hands around them. And my dad used to be in the Air Force. And he'd pretend to be a, a, a plane, a fighter plane. Uh, and I'm just sitting on his lap and he's vibrating his thumbs going. Tuk, 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 tuk. So I suppose that's one of my earliest, most fondest memories. And, and thank you for asking that question. You've really made my day. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, to go, to go back in time, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. And these little happy memories that we can, that we can bring on sometimes makes a, uh, a, a darker day a lot, a lot brighter, doesn't yeah. it? But I do know what you're talking about. I've got a, uh, my first grandson, he's now, um, well, my first grandchild, 
He's now seven months old. We're going Centre Parks uh, next week. They've invited me to Centre Parks with him, so I'm going to go across and spend some a lot more time. I normally see him once or twice a week, but uh, holding on to a, a baby, it's been my youngest uh, daughter. I've got two daughters. One is uh, 24, and she's just had the child, and uh, the other one is uh, she's 17, so she'll be wanting a car soon or help with that. <laughs> So uh, I don't know if that's going to be an, a, a good memory for me, but it's 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 it's, it's on its way. She'll be love listening to this. She actually uh, listens to some of these podcasts. Um, was, what sort of jobs did you do, Tom, before you became a chiropractor? Say again, sorry. What sort of jobs did you do before you became a chiropractor? Oh, I done loads. I you know, I have a an insatiable work ethic, and I think that comes from some of the work that I've done. I all, I've always had a job, I suppose, as far as I can remember. Um, right back from a paper round then i worked in the co-op uh i was a laborer for most of my studies paying my paying my way as a laborer uh worked in an off license worked at a school for kids learning english um and then i was a, a royal marine reservist so that's i suppose i think that's my pot of history of work but i've always enjoyed work i've always enjoyed the fruits of my own labor um, which I suppose, you know, pays into how I live my life these days. Brilliant. No, that's, that's, that's awesome. I've done a few jobs like that myself. I was, uh, I once even dug the roads and fixed gas pipes. So I've done a few, uh, a few jobs, which, um, I have a lot of patients who do that. That's physical work. That is physical work. <laughs> it, it is. And I'm th thankful for it because it was one that one of those jobs that did enough damage that made me go to the chiropractors a little bit more than I had done in the past. And uh, from that, I, I just one day, I just decided, you know what? Um, I, I was running my own business, uh, dealing with property um, restoration. So we're dealing with historic buildings uh, for English Heritage National Trust. And we, we'd, you know, the business we'd, we did travel, we did even travel throughout Europe. I even went to worked in Barbados for a little bit doing, doing running my business. But the, the, the change happened for me in 2010 um when i was with, went to see my mother and from that i made a decision um after the traveling out to to america where she lives in st louis i thought to myself you know waking up in the morning a little bit of a, a long flight and uh it, i don't know it thought door to door is probably about 13 hours and i was i know work stayed up with them during the, during their their day and then went to bed with them so I'd been awake for probably well over 20 odd hours and I was tired and I woke up in the morning and I, I, just, I was a little bit grumpy. My mother said, why don't you come and see our, our local chiropractor? I thought, well, I have chiropractic. I'd be interested to see their chiropractor, Doc, Dr. Ray in St. Louis. And uh, we spent a bit of time driving across. So I felt every bump in the road. I think a lot of us have, are familiar with that sort of feeling. And he helped me no end. And at the end of that uh, one session, I, when we came back, I, it, it, that was my light bulb moment of what I was going to do. I was going to change the way that I was uh, making money. I, one, I wanted to offer this gift to people, and this was um, this was how I was going to this was what I wanted to do. And so I, I enrolled into at the time it was Mc, Mc, um, the one I could actually do was McTimony Chiropractic in Abingdon. Um, I believe you went to Wales, didn't you? No, I went to AECC. Oh, um, did you? But my my wife and all my associates, bar one associate, have been McTimony grads. Um, but my wife's similar. She was a police officer, and she when we met, and she you know she joined that force thinking she's going to help people, but came to a stark realization she's not helping anybody, and was extremely upset uh, with her life. Uh, and she just decided like, that's it. I've had enough, and I'm changing. And you're similar to you. And yeah, what was your light bulb moment? my light bulb moment was it spanned over a period of time but i was in practice and i was doing these long visits working for a chiropractor who, who very much towed the party line of pain base but i was seeing these miracles happen and i couldn't explain the miracle with the the knowledge and understanding i had of chiropractic at the time and that sent me on a rabbit hole of uh, investigation i ended up um YouTubing Billy DeMoss's original uh, DCS Clubhouse, which are these really old YouTube videos he used to do back in the day. And I used to watch those. Um, and I think that just made me think, actually, I, this, there's more to this uh, than I'm seeing at the moment. And then that just set me off down this, this rabbit hole of, of finding out chiropractic. 
and then move employment and i ended up seeing this guy called malcolm uh, and malcolm was 63 when he came to see me and his wife had been under care with, for her back but she said can you help my husband who's got lung failure and heart failure and i said well we'll give it a go and he, he comes in for his first appointment he gets his first adjustment and he takes a full breath of air and the next time he comes in he's bent over double again with his oxygen tank on next adjustment another full breath of air and we do this dance back and forth for several weeks and he's starting to improve his lung function his heart function just with these adjustments and i, I can't explain it he ends up taking a course of antibiotics going into hospital and i was the person who go to hospital and adjust him the only two people who went to the hospital were his wife and me and when i adjusted him in the hospital and saw the, the monitors show an improvement in that moment you know i was sold on, on, on chiropractic there and then um and ever since that moment you know i've known that chiropractic enhances the quality of somebody's life doesn't save lives but it enhances the quality of people's life uh, and that's what what i believe everybody has the potential for and should have the opportunity for as well yeah absolutely I've, I've been working with somebody in hospital at the moment at the george elliott um he's actually a chiropractor who had an accident in his kitchen and broke his neck and uh so uh, uh gus uh, some people might know him as gus but it's john john gibbon and uh so he's paraplegic um in the george elliott and i'm going up there just to obviously very carefully um offering some decompression because that's about all you all you can do with 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 him but what a difference it makes and um you know you can clearly see that from no, no movement in his um upper cervicals there's suddenly that that reduced compression and, and a lot more movement and the lift in his you can see it in his eyes and obviously you can appreciate it's done very carefully but this is but, brilliant and you, you you talked at the start about the sort of rebellious attitude chiropractors used to have that level of certainty where someone was like that they'd be okay i'm gonna adjust you i remember my brother stroked he had his first stroke when he was 23 now my brother's not an unhealthy guy he's a guy who puts himself in extremely stressful environments around the world um and he had a stroke and I remember as soon as he was, was flown back to the UK, I went to his ward and I adjusted him in the stroke ward. And like, you know, the, the, the institutions of chiropractic will tell you, you do not do that. But I'm saying to myself, OK, well, if he's had a stroke because of a convolution in an artery in his neck, if his neck is subluxated, is that going to create more or less tension on that artery? More. So he, he's going to live better and heal better subluxation free. And he did and he does. And he lives a great life now. So I, I love the fact you're doing that uh, uh, for Gus. Um, and I love your certainty and your passion. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful to someone like you in the profession doing that. Yeah, it's the understanding. I mean, do, do, do I think, do chiropractors believe that we can help people like Gus by adjusting him and he's not going to be a paraplegic anymore? Absolutely not. But it's not just like you say, it's, it's what we're actually offering for his nervous system just to offer some relief and, and give him some... So, do you know that little bit of extra movement in his neck? He's so thankful for that. He is well, you look so at, take thankful. Take Christopher Reeve as an example. Christopher Reeve, who, Superman, horse riding accident, paraplegic. Quadriplegic. Um, and do you know what he died from? No. He died from pneumonia. Yeah. So he died from the fact that his spinal cord injury compromised his immune system. So what if he had been adjusted, not to make him walk again, but to allow his nervous system, as you're quite rightly saying, to function and therefore potentially his health improve long term? Yeah, no, without without a doubt. So I guess I'm guessing here. I'd like I'd like I'd like to know what what why you're doing it. You're putting massive amounts of passion, enthusiasm, enthusiasm, and energy into training. Um, not just new graduates, but a chiropractor has been around the business for a very long time. Um, and I've, I've been on, I've been on your courses and they're, they're, at, they're, they're excellent. They're, they're brilliant. And when you leave, you have you've, you're left with this brand new energy to go out there and, and can't wait to get back in the, the clinic on, on the Monday. Uh, but what, what's, where are you getting the passion? Where are you getting the energy from to, to do this work? I, I've always fought for the little guy, I think, is, is, is my driver. I think I, when I was young, I was unheard. Um, uh, I, I struggled and I had to voice up 
and I suppose I'm a, I, I'm a supporter of those who 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 need a, a stronger voice. So, you know, my my teaching thing is is adjusting skills and certainty. And I think adjusting certainty in a chiropractor is really important um, to give confidence and give strength. Um, and I see there's a necessity for for the future of humanity to have leaders in healthcare uh, really standing up for, for what we believe in. It gives me huge drive to see other chiropractors thrive. Um, and I coach chiropractors all around the world. And it's so nice just to see them really become certain, increase their skill. And then the, the ripple effect of that uh, I, I, is what I love to see. So you picked the name ASC, so it's adjusting skills and certainty. certainty. Yeah. What, what, what made you pick those? I mean, I, I get it, but what, what made you pick those those particular words I, for what we do? Because I, I had a look at the profession. I thought, where where are we lacking? You know, there's a lot of stuff out there on how to get new patients, how to market, how, how to bring people into your practice, um, all of which I teach. But, you know, it's like, the, it's like you, know, you know, when you go to the car and you go and buy a new car and you have this interaction with the car salesman. And they sell you on this amazing car. It's going to change your life. You love it. You fall in love with it. And you say, I want this. I'm going to buy it. And you've had a fantastic experience with the car salesman. It then comes to the car's first service. And you meet the service team. And you have a very poor experience. It leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. Uh, and it really wasn't up to the standard of what you had when you first bought the car. I think this is what happens in chiropractic. We have this amazing stuff put out there to bring people into the practice. But then it it falls away. It's like the man who built his house on the sand versus the man who built his house on the rock. And where I see the need and desire from chiropractors is to increase their skill. And I think we all get that. But I think what chiropractors really want from that is an increase in their certainty to, to, to be strong and convicted in their beliefs as well as convicted in their confidence to take someone through a care plan to get the result that they're looking for so when i had a look at the profession and thought what do, what does it really need it needs more skilled chiropractors and more certain chiropractors and i think if we get those two things uh we'll, we'll have a true impact in, in the world so with these students that you have um say students some, some people are older boys like me what are you hoping that they're going to change in their mind? Are you tr changing their mindset towards what they are, what they're doing as a, as a, uh, as a, as a profession within the chiropractic work? Are you trying to help them change their viewer psyche shift? And if, if that's the case, what type of psyche shift are you looking for from when they turn up, they've never seen you before they turn up on a course and what are you trying to help them to become perhaps over, you know, maybe several years. Oh, so. I suppose two different things. If, if I'm working with a one-on-one -on -one client or people in the, in the group, the first thing we work on with them is their, is their values and really to understand themselves and be sure of who they are first. Because I think that's, that's the most important foundation that we have. You can then build upon that foundation your certainty in chiropractic. So the first thing we'll do is work on uh, figuring out their values, their gifts, what, what they can really bring to the world, what they want, not what they've been told they should have or what they believe they should have. So some real core deep work that we do with with uh, people at the start. When you come to one of my courses, it's slightly different. So I haven't got the time to do those deep value questions. So we start with the philosophy of chiropractic and really understanding what is what is it that we do. And people get this hang up on philosophy saying, oh, there's no place for philosophy in chiropractic. That's a complete misunderstanding of what what the term philosophy is, because philosophy is simply the search of wisdom. And it's asking the right questions. So when you come to a patient and you're asking yourself, where am I going to adjust them? That's a philosophical approach. So you need to have that understanding first. So we, we build a true understanding. Uh, and what I think I'm very good at is taking all of these green books and this, this philosophy of chiropractic and I'm putting it into something very compact and getting people to go, ah, that's what it is. That makes sense. Now I'm confident to work with that. And then we layer up the skill that's needed beyond that to, to get them to, to become certain in their business, certain in their, in their adjusting and certain in their practice. So how do you feel at the moment, if don't want me asking, this is quite a, a, a sort of a sensitive question. We have, uh, we have four universities now in the, in the, within the British Isles. 
and within the universities there's a slight difference in philosophies would you say yep how are you where do you think we're going with chiropractic in the future and are you hope where, where would you hope i think that's the thing where would you hope we're going to go as far as the uh the universities and the philosophy that they're actually um i guess in you use the words imposing on us some of them are going to be far more, far more vitalistic and some of them not so much and some of them are actually changing their ways and becoming if you like more of a profession of physios would you say yeah, yeah i mean each each university has its merits and and and, and downfalls um you know i have a patient in every single year and and CAs in every single year of McTimini at the moment um who will be graduating through and coming into into the business um that university has merit in terms of allowing the students to find chiropractic do they teach exactly what i think they should no um should they teach everything no uh, because when we when we think about what university is university is tertiary level education tertiary level education is self-directed learning it's not indoctrination it's not one plus one equals two that's secondary education which is schooling and that's unfortunately what the other universities are still doing they're doing one plus one equals two which is not university education i suppose this is a whole change in the culture of the whole world but we see that in chiropractic i would say some of those universities quite frankly are not fit for purpose um in terms of in terms of graduating chiropractors um just about still you can think of it as you've learned to pass your test like your daughter's about to think about passing her test to drive then she's going to learn how to drive properly you get your graduation degree in chiropractic you've learned you've got your degree and now you learn how to become a chiropractor and i think that's what is but there are some universities that are changing to the point where actually they probably wouldn't even pass the driving test so that's incumbent upon us to vote with our our dollars as they say vote with our pounds send people to the schools that are going to train chiropractors and starve the schools that are not yeah so i wonder whether i get a little bit of gold fr from you a little bit of uh, treasure i happen to find a uh, i think it was an old um, youtube uh, recording that you made where you're explaining about the talks that you recommend and advise people to do um, in their clinics when they're bringing in new clients. So doing health talks, how important do you think health talks are for the building of your business? And if, if it is important, which I believe you're gonna say yes, um, what sort of things should be covered and how often, how often did you do them? How often do you do them now? Huge topic. Now, I think they're essential. Caveat, I said a minute ago, the first thing i work on people with is their values and their gifts my gift is speaking your gift lies behind your greatest fear uh, i am i not i am i'm not i am i used to be i was labeled very dyslexic i still am very uncomfortable in in social situations and it's something that i had to build the confidence in to make great so the reason i say that is some people's gift is not speaking some people's gift might be in the written arts some people's gift might be in the one one-on-one -on -one. but i think everyone should try and give it a go to, to to bring talks into into growing their practice why because talks bring out a lot of emotion uh it's not necessarily the content of your talk it's the context of your talk uh it's how you motivate it's how you you build this community together to to grow behind something so if we think about what what makes a really successful business startup is three things it's a future-based vision it's a new idea and a charismatic leader those three things are crucial to build a new business so a future-based vision would be saying uh, we've come to lincoln to make lincolnshire the healthiest county in the country it's currently one of the worst we want to take it to be one of the best that gets a whole community to go wow that's a vision i want to be part of in the future you then think of a new idea. The beautiful thing is chiropractic is actually a new idea if you have true chiropractic. It's not like another form of physiotherapy. It's not like another drug. It's a completely new concept whereby your body has the ability to heal itself so long as it's 
nervous system is working freely, we remove those subluxation. That new idea, something people can get behind and understand. And then you need the charismatic leader to take those things to the public. Now, by virtue of being a chiropractor, you are a charismatic leader because you are quite weird and odd in the eyes of the public. So you can lean into that. That's just how we are. Um, so that said, being able to orate, being able to speak and do talks is essential to bring those components together to, to get out to your community. So when we set up our practice, we were very successful in a very short period of time. Uh, I, I mean, within a few months, we were one of the busiest practices in the UK from doing talks. And I did an orientation and I call it an orientation because no one likes to be told about health and no one likes to attend a talk or a lecture. So we, we give it a different name, an orientation. And I did them twice a week, every week uh, for five years until COVID made us change and pivot slightly. Uh, we now do them uh, every every week still, um, as well as going out into the public and doing other talks and doing other topics of, of talks in-house. Yeah, I, I was fortunate enough as well, that not just speaking to people like yourself, Tom, but to speak to uh, another great choir, Arno Bernier. And he was mm. speaking, he said very, very similar things to you. He was, he was doing regular talks. And that was one of the things that brought these health talks were that brought in clients, got his name out. In the end, he was getting GPs that were turning up to, to his talks. And that, so the, the, na the chiropractic name gets out and the, pr the profession gets out in a very good way and also brings in cl uh, uh, clients in their, uh, in, their, in their droves, don't they? But it is a very difficult thing. And for what it's worth, I want to say, Tom, I've seen you speak twice now. And I think you're probably one of the best speakers that I've seen. And I do mean that from the heart. That that's um, so. It is interesting, you know. You saying that the very thing that we're frightened of doing. I do understand what you're saying there. Actually, behind it will be a, will be a gift. And, um, I greatly sounds... appreciate you saying that. Yeah, no. Um, Arno, actually, interestingly, Arno, like he he was someone who it was another pivotal moment for me. He fantastic being, isn't he? His energy is just extraordinary. And I used his his line that he was told by a doctor many years ago and i still use it in my talks and i hope i'm not going to butcher it now um he says there is nothing that i can do about what's wrong with you what i can do however is express everything that is right within you if you go into a dark room you can't remove the darkness you simply have to turn on the light right you can't fight disease you simply have to promote life and i, I that's the most eloquent sentence that i've ever heard that takes chiropractic and just goes there it is yeah it wasn't butchered it was exactly word for word i know, I know that very well mm. uh, it's a wonderful wonderful statement so what can people expect to when they when they um how do, how would they enroll on onto onto one of your one of your courses or, or can do you uh with your mentoring how do they enroll onto the mentoring cool so i've I, i've got several programs um i do one-on-one -on -one coaching with very few clients uh, obviously it takes a lot of time but they are uh, clients who are maybe expanding their business or setting up a new business who are willing to invest. It's not, it's not a, it's not, it's not a cheap coaching. So I do one-on-one -on -one co coaching with a few clients. Then I have a group mentorship, uh, the certain ones, which is, um, so weekly Q and A calls and online coaching for a group of chiropractors. You can find out more about both of those on the website, ASCchiro.com, A-S-C-C-H-I-R-O.com. Uh, you can find out more about that. The best way to get hold of me is, is through Instagram or, or on um, probably Instagram, really, uh, Tom Waller UK. Um, I'm going to be running a an adjusting crash course. I don't know when does this when is this coming out? This will be this will be um, in the next two weeks. So in the next this will two be, weeks, we, yeah. So be, before the end of May, this this will be out and be okay. Provided. So I'm going to do I'm going to do three UK dates uh, of adjusting crash courses this year. Um, the ticket price is. It's going to be no higher than 80 quid. It's going to be really cheap uh, because what I want, what I want to see change by the end of the year is a level of skill in chiropractors increase because I think that, that that needs to happen. So I'm going to be running them in my hometown of Lincoln. I'll be down, I believe, either, either Bristol or Oxford way down south. And then I'll go up north to either uh, Newcastle or Manchester. So I'm going to run them around the country. Uh, um, they're going to be super affordable. So if you're a student or you're, you're a chiropractor, you're struggling, you'll still be able to get to it. And they will be on my website too. So look out for those. Um, that's what I'm really going for at the end of this year. Um, and then my my speaking gigs this year are all over in the States. So I, I don't think I've got a talk in Europe this year. 
No, it's really awesome. It doesn't surprise me that you're speaking all over the world, Tom. Look, I want to thank you so much for, for being on this. And what we're going to do we, we'll, within the bio below, we'll have the information for the, the courses and also for the, the website, etc. So they can get in touch with you, either for your mentoring or for anything else that you're doing, even just, I guess, you offer some help and support. But I want to thank you so, so much for coming on, Tom. Really appreciate your time. And I will be on, I'll be on that course as well, if that's OK. Um, Please, and, I'd love you to be there. Yeah, no, without a doubt, I, sh I should be on it thanks again for, for, for being on today and uh, if any listeners if you've really enjoyed this then please like and subscribe share it to as many people as you want people who uh, like chiropractic support chiropractic and obviously if you know the chiropractors that would be interested in uh, hearing people like Tom talking about their skills and what they can do and what they how they can offer and also some of their experiences of life which I actually love to hear then that, that please share it so thanks very much I really appreciate your time thank you from the heart love you man thank you and um if it's okay with you i'd like to bring you on again sometime in the future if that's okay i would love to do that and i love to appreciate what you're doing so thank you very much for having me it's been great really enjoyed it no i i, I enjoy it i really it, it gives me an, an opportunity to speak to people like you so thank you speak to you soon take care bye-bye take care